Hey folks, in this video, I'd like to show you how to use a spreadsheet and Desmos to plot sequences of partial sums. So given an infinite series, we define its associated sequence of terms, which is exactly the sequence you get basically by stripping out the plus signs and its sequence of partial sums, which are respectively what you get by adding up just a little bit more of the terms each time. Understanding this sequence of partial sums is critical to understanding the convergence of the series, so it would be nice if you had the ability to gather graphical or numerical evidence about this sequence of partial sums, and that's what I want to talk about. So we'll learn how to use a spreadsheet and Desmos to plot both of these sequences. Now, I know that you can use just a spreadsheet to do this, and I know that you can use just Desmos to do this, but I actually like to use both to leverage the strengths of both, and I'll just show you how that's done. So the um, sequence is going to be where, where it will create data within the spreadsheet using the formula for the series. Then we're going to easily transport that data into Desmos. It's a snap. And once it's in Desmos, you can plot it. And you can also, there's this option for further analysis in Desmos, which is just wonderful. So we'll look at that as well. All right. So here's our sequence of partial sums. And the n minus 1th partial sum would look like this. And the very next partial sum would look like this. That's the nth partial sum. And we'll notice that buried within the nth partial sum is, of course, the n minus 1th partial sum. So sigma n is equal to sigma n minus 1 plus a n. This shouldn't be uh, a shock, but this simple observation, which we can actually capture this way, we can say, look, if we're on term n, the current partial sum is equal to the previous partial sum plus the current term. So this very simple idea actually is perfectly suited for a spreadsheet. It's going to allow us to very quickly generate the sequence of partial sums for a series once we've been able to define its terms. So let's analyze the harmonic series, which is the series you get by reciprocating all the natural numbers and adding those together. So it's one plus a half plus a third plus etc. Now, we should just take a look at the first three terms. There are the first three terms right there, one, one half, and a third. The first partial sum is going to just be the first term. The second partial sum will be the previous partial sum plus this, this second term. And then the third partial sum will be the previous, the second partial sum plus the third term, and so on. So just take a look at these numbers, because once we uh, do this exercise, we should be able to recognize these, at least when we import our data into Desmos, to make sure we're OK. So here we are in a spreadsheet. I'm going to use Google Sheets here. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the indices. And to do that, we'll just start the pattern off, the linear pattern of the indices, and then we'll use the plus drag operation to fill in the column. So here I'm going to put one, two, three in. I'm going to make a selection here and then hover over the lower right corner. You see the plus sign. Once you've got the plus sign, it means that Sheets is ready to drag formulas or patterns. So we'll drag this down to 14. And now we've quickly generated our index set. And you can drag that down further if you wanted more terms. Now, the next step is to make sure that we get our terms uh, entered properly. So to do this, we're going to fill in the formula for the first term as a function of the first index. We're going to use the formula that the series um, provides to us. We're just going to have to do this for the first term, and then we're going to be able to use the plus drag option to fill it in the rest of the column. So let's take a look at what this means in our case. We know that the terms here are the reciprocals of the index. So this first term should be 1 divided by, and then we'll put in a reference to the first term. So it's 1 divided by a2 in this case. Now we're going to drag that down using the plus drag option. You can see that the references were updated properly right on down. So pick a row, any row, like the sixth row, row 6 there. So the index is 5, and the reference was to take 1 divided by 5. And there you can see in box B6, you can see 0 0.2. And you can see here with the first three terms that we expected, 1, 1 half, and 1 third. So this seems to be um, working well here. Now we could clean up the formatting. And this is a simple matter. We've got all our data selected here. And we can just go up to this bar and find the decimal places and uniformize that. So we can just increase some spots and make that look nice. All right, now we're ready for the partial sums. 
So how do we create the partial sums? So the first partial sum is just the first term. It's a special case. We just have to go in and do that one specially. And then the second partial sum is the sum of the first partial sum and the second term. And then that's really all the work we have to do because at that point we can drag down that formula using plus drag. So let's take a look. Here we are. First partial sum is equal to the first term. That's a special case we're just going to have to include. Now the second partial sum, we're going to say equals partial sum plus and then term. So that's going to pick off the previous partial sum and the current term. And now if we use plus drag, we will successfully drag down that reference and we get our partial sums. Now, once again, just take a look at these first three. The first three partial sums are what we expected, 1, 1.5, and about 1.833. So it's looking good. OK, now we copy the data. So what you want to do here is shift click to get from one corner to the other. So you select one corner of your data and then go to the other corner and you shift click and you'll be able to click the whole um, data set. And then you hit copy, command C or control C, whatever your operating system allows. So you copy that data and now you head over to um, Desmos. And all you do to plot the partial sums is you're going to paste the data into a cell. Couldn't be easier. You're going to turn off the sequence of terms if you're not really interested in those. Adjust the window to get a pretty picture. So here we go. You enter a cell and just paste Command V or Control V as, it, as the case may be. Now you could sort of zoom around uh, and here we're going to turn off the sequence of terms. Let's say we were only interested in the sequence of partial sums. You could zoom around and sort of go dizzy doing this, but you could also hit the wrench setting and sort of directly enter limits that uh, are suitable for your picture. So, you know, if you want to change the y axis, you go in here and you can put the limit here at about, say, 3.5 and then um, zoom in for some final detail. And so that's enough. There we go. Let's, that looks good. All right. So here we have our sequence of partial sums. And you can see that it's a strictly increasing sequence. Um, kind of looks logarithmic to me. So, you have the option to perform optional analysis in Desmos. So what happens here? You can create an equation. I put it in air quotes because using the name of the relevant data set and the symbol tilde, the tilde is found in the top left corner of your keyboard. And if you use unknown coefficients in your equation, basically what you'll be doing is you'll be telling Desmos to try to find a relationship of that form that best fits the data. So um, Desmos then tries to give you back um, the best choice of those coefficients. So let's, this will make much more sense with a specific example. Here we have the partial sums as a function of n. So we might think that sigma n, the nth partial sum, is somehow a scaled version of the logarithm function. We might think, well, you know, it's just some scaled version of ln of n, a times ln of n, plus a constant k. So let's go with that hypothesis. How could we get Desmos to sort of fit the data with this model? So we look to sigma n. Sigma n is being captured by the variable named z1 in our data set. And the index n is being um, captured by the uh, symbol x1. So this is the expression we should put into a cell. z sub 1 um, is, you know, we'll use the tilde symbol. Um, a ln of x1 plus k. And if we put that into the cell, Desmos will try to uh, find a and k to make this relationship as good as possible. So here we go. We are going to uh, enter into a cell z sub 1 tilde ln of x sub 1 plus K. And so it's now fit that model as best as it can. And I've forgotten the A. So let's go back and put that in there. So here's A and it'll update the model. And there you go. Pretty nice fit. So um, let's think about this for a second. If the partial sums of this series really go up like the logarithm function, well, that's pretty strong evidence that the sequence of partial sums diverges because the logarithm function we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of ln is infinity. So actually, if this is at all true, we strongly suspect that this series must diverge. 
we'll see that later in a different video. So let's analyze the geometric series one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus so on. Now the sigma notation here is one over two to the n minus one. If our, if our first index is one, we have to sort of offset things. So two to the zero is one. And so that's why we're gonna use n minus one in um, the exponent there. So that'll be important when we go in here. So let's repeat all of this uh, from scratch. So here we go. Here are the terms. So we're going to take one over two raised to the index. So we'll click on that reference minus one. And then we will drag that with the plus drag option and we will drag that down and we get our terms. First partial sum equals just the term. Second partial sum equals previous partial sum plus current term plus drag boom now we're going to select the whole data set shift click and we'll go over here to desmos and we will plug this in maybe we'll ditch the sequence of terms and boy look at those sequence uh, look at that sequence of partial sums we're going to plot the line y equals two and notice that there's pretty strong graphical evidence that this sequence of partial sums is converging to the value two and uh, in a future video we will see that that is indeed the case as well so hopefully um, these tools will allow you to explore just about any series that you have an explicit formula for um, just fire up a spreadsheet and Desmos and have some fun with it.